Hi everyone, and thank you for being here. Today, we're going to dive into a problem that almost all social platforms face, but few get right, recommending people you may know. Whether you're on LinkedIn, Facebook, or any other network, these suggestions are critical for driving engagement and helping users grow meaningful connections. But how do we actually decide who to recommend? How can we do it in a way that scales to millions or even billions of users? In this presentation, we'll explore how to frame this as a machine learning problem, engineer the right features, and build graph-based models that understand both individual behavior and social context. We'll also talk about evaluation, serving infrastructure, and how to ensure recommendations are both accurate and fast. Let's jump in. The problem is to find people you might want to connect based on certain criteria, as in LinkedIn or Facebook. Here are some good questions to ask in the requirement clarification phase. Is the goal to help people grow their network? Is friendship symmetrical? How many connections does an average user have? What's the total number of users? Let's frame the people you may know system as a machine learning problem, where the goal is to help users grow their social graph by forming meaningful new connections. ML objective. Our core ML objective is to maximize the number of successful connections made by users. We want to recommend people that the user is likely to send a friend request to or accept one from based on behavioral and social signals. Input and output. Input. A single user, the one browsing suggestions. Output a ranked list of potential connections sorted by their likelihood of resulting in a successful friend request. Pointwise learning to rank, LTR. We approach this as a pointwise learning to rank, LTR problem. For each user-candidate pair, the model predicts a probability score that reflects how likely these two users are to connect. This becomes a ranking problem. We rank all candidates by their predicted connection likelihood. However, it's important to note that this does not take social context into account. It looks at each user pair independently, ignoring their position in the overall network. Edge prediction in graphs. To capture the social structure of the network, we also explore edge prediction. In this view, the social network is modeled as a graph with users as nodes and connections as edges. The goal becomes, predict whether an edge connection should exist between two nodes. This method can leverage graph-based features such as number of mutual friends, shortest path length, common communities, personalized page rank. This approach introduces social context into the decision-making process making recommendations more grounded in the user's network structure. To summarize, we frame this as a ranking and edge prediction task. Pointwise, LTR offers a scalable solution but ignores graph structure. Edge prediction incorporates network topology and can improve recommendation quality through social signals. A hybrid of both approaches often yields the best results starting with graph signals for candidate generation, and then using LTR for fine-grained ranking. Let's walk through the data preparation phase, which lays the foundation for building an effective people-you-may-know recommendation system. Data engineering. We start by collecting and structuring the core entities that define our social network. Users. This includes basic information such as user ID, demographics like age, gender, and location, sign-up time, and possibly activity indicators like login frequency or engagement levels. Connections. These represent the edges in our social graph, existing friendships, follows, or mutual relationships. This data defines the known structure of our network. Interactions. Going beyond static connections, we look at dynamic behaviors, profile views, likes, comments, friend requests, sent or received, and any other signals of latent interest. These help capture intent, not just structure. Feature engineering. 
After structuring the raw data, we move on to feature engineering. The goal is to extract signals that can help the model assess how likely two users are to connect. User features. We compute standalone features per user. Demographics, age, location, connection count, degree, number of followers, followings, account age or activity frequency. These help the model understand a user's general connectivity and level of engagement. User-user affinities. These features compare two users and measure how similar or compatible they are. Common friends, shared interests or page likes, mutual groups or events. This reflects whether there's a basis for a meaningful connection. Social affinities. We also compute higher order features from the social graph. Graph-based similarity metrics like Jacquard similarity, Adamic Adar, or Cosine similarity over embedding vectors, personalized page rank scores to estimate how close two users are in the network, community detection outputs to identify users within the same cluster. These features capture latent social structure, which is often a strong predictor of future links. To summarize, we prepare data on users, their connections, and their social behavior. We engineer features that help the model reason about how similar or socially close two users are. This sets the stage for model development, especially for edge prediction or learning to rank approaches. Let's now look at a more powerful, structure-aware approach using graph neural networks for the people you may know system. Since our data is inherently graph structured, with users as nodes and connections as edges, GNNs are a natural fit. They allow us to directly model the social structure by propagating information across the network. Model architecture, GNN for link prediction. Each node, user, is associated with a set of features. These could be demographics, interests, or engagement history. The GNN learns node embeddings by aggregating information from neighboring nodes, capturing both individual features and the local social context. To predict whether two users will connect, we use a similarity measure like dot product or concatenated MLP between their final embeddings. Constructing training data. To train this model in a supervised setting, graph snapshot at time t. We take a snapshot of the social graph at a given time. Nodes are users, edges represent existing connections, node and edge features, compute features for each user node, demographics, activity. Optional, include edge features like interaction frequency or recency, label creation, positive examples, user pairs that form a new connection between T and T plus one, negative examples, random or hard negative pairs that do not connect in that time. This transforms the link prediction task into a binary classification problem on node pairs. Loss function. We use binary cross entropy loss to train the model. One for positive edges, future connections, zero for negative ones. For better performance, we can also use contrastive loss or margin-based ranking loss to push embeddings of real future pairs closer than unrelated pairs. Challenges and considerations. Scalability. Full graph training can be expensive, so we often use mini-batch training with neighbor sampling, e.g. GraphSage, ColdStart, for users with few or no connections, GNNs can still work if node features are strong. Oversmoothing. Too many GNN layers can lead to indistinguishable node embeddings. We mitigate this with residual connections or layer normalization. Why this matters GNNs allow us to move beyond simple feature-based similarity and instead learn a context-aware representation of each user. This captures subtle structural cues like who your friends' friends are, whether you are in the same community, and how active or central a user is in the network. This results in better quality recommendations, not just based on profile similarity, but based on where you are in the graph. To assess the effectiveness of our recommendation system, we use a combination of offline and online evaluation metrics. 
Offline metrics. We start with offline evaluation, which uses historical interaction data to measure model performance before deployment. PROC, Precision Recall AUC. This is especially useful in our case, since the positive examples, actual connection requests, are sparse compared to the vast number of non-connections. PROS gives us a better view of the model's precision and recall trade-off in a highly imbalanced setting. MAP, mean average precision. MAP helps us understand how well the model ranks potential connections. It averages the precision across all users for the ranked list of suggestions, taking into account where in the list actual connections appear. A high map means the model is surfacing the most relevant potential connections early in the ranking. Online metrics after deployment. Online metrics help us evaluate real-world impact. Total number of connection requests. Sent. Accepted. Last X days. This is our key online success metric. It reflects user engagement directly driven by our recommendations. We monitor both requests sent and requests accepted to understand both initiative and mutual interest. A rising trend here indicates the model is effectively matching users with relevant potential connections. These metrics collectively guide us in validating model quality, deciding when to launch new models, and measuring user impact after deployment. At scale, serving people you may know recommendations efficiently becomes a major engineering challenge. Let's walk through how we address scalability while ensuring freshness and responsiveness. Scalability challenges. One of the key insights is that 92% of new connections come from friends of friends, FOF, so we lean heavily on this structure. However, computing recommendations in real time for every user is costly, especially with billions of users. To solve this, we rely on pre-computed recommendations and optimize the generation and serving pipeline. Generation pipeline, batch prediction, FOF service. This service efficiently computes the friends of friends network for each user. It serves as a candidate generator drastically reducing the number of users we need to score. Scoring service. Once we have candidates, we use our GNN model to score how likely each pair is to form a connection. The output is a ranked list of potential new connections for every user. Storage. These top candidates are stored as pre-computed PYMK suggestions in a database. This allows us to serve recommendations with minimal latency at inference time. Prediction pipeline, online serving, primary flow, use pre-computed recommendations. When a user opens the app, we first check for pre-computed PYMK results. If they exist, we serve them instantly, no extra computation required. Fallback flow, real-time generation. If there are no stored suggestions, for example, for new users or cold start scenarios, we trigger a one-time request to the PYMK generation pipeline. This ensures the user still receives recommendations without delay, albeit with slightly higher latency. Design trade-offs. This hybrid strategy, batch prediction for the majority, real-time fallback for exceptions, helps us achieve low latency for most users freshness of recommendations via regular updates, and cost-effective scalability. This system balances performance and personalization while serving billions of recommendations daily.